Good morning. So here we are, I guess with part two of the M Musi Virgo Classic T-Style guitar uh, that I demoed on a previous video. Super impressed with this thing, man. It's it's amazing. Um, fit and finish is incredible. Um, just some little things like static in the knob and the in the volume knob and especially in the tone pot. So I just wanna I just wanna see what's under the hood. They say, uh, you no know, true beauty lies within. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna have a look and see what's underneath this pickguard and see what's underneath this control plate. Because uh, I'm overall I'm pretty impressed. So um, let's do this. And if you guys are thinking of buying one of these, maybe maybe this will help you make a decision as well. Uh, I know some people are very particular about what's inside a guitar. Because like I said, um, you know, I've bought a few budget guitar guitars, like, uh, you know, an Earth and an IYV and an Amun. Um, you know, I've done some mods to a bunch of my own guitars here. I've built a headless telly uh, with some Earth parts. Um, so you guys may have seen that. And those guitars are all, are all good, but I fully expect them to need some upgrades, right, when I buy them. And the, the prices are, are low enough to allow for that. But with this guitar, I'm above $500, like, to my door. Um, I don't want to have to put, you know, 150 bucks, 200 bucks in upgrades to make it good, right? And I know that word is different for everybody, but, uh, but that's, that's the case. So I just... So uh, I want to see what's inside this thing and to see what it would really need, um, if anything. So, all right, let's do this. Oh, all right. Well, cloth wire pickups. Uh, you know what? There's black. It's black on the inside, so it looks like it's shielding paint, which I'm kind of disappointed with. <laughs> uh, not because it's shielded, but because there's so much noise. However... Um, the bridge is not shielded. So here you can see the two pickup wires, the two ground wires, and so the two pickup wires are white. The two, uh, needs, maybe I can get you guys a little closer here. Let me see if I can, uh, slide this down a bit for you. Uh, how's that? There we go. Get you a little closer to the action. Move that over. So, <clears throat> use this pen. So here you can see you know, the pickup coming from the neck. You can see the pickup coming from the bridge. And then you can see the output from the switch going to the pot. You can see the two ground wires from the pickups are soldered to the back of the pot. Uh, you can see the black and white wire coming in from the jack, and that's it. So there is no ground wire um, going to the bridge. So none of this, you know, the bridge, saddles, whatever, uh, it's not shielded. So that would explain uh, a lot of that uh, grounding kind of buzzing issue that I was having. So I guess that's an easy fix. Um, it's not as clean as I would have expected with the fit and finish of this guitar. Um, there's a lot of dust residue inside here, inside the cavity. Maybe I can show you that. Let me see if I can get a zoomy in here. I'm, I'm using my front facing camera, so I'm a little here. There, come with me. Come with me, people. I if you can see that. It could be worse for you, or maybe. Anyway, but the cavities are very well routed, um, very nice, but uh, again, a little bit, you know, dusty inside, which is to be expected, I guess. Uh, there is some sawdust and saw, you know, chips where the screw holes were. So anyway, it's to be expected, I guess. All right, well, as you can see, there's a the five-way uh, or a three-way American-style blade switch, full-size pots. Um, oh, CTS. It says CTS on them. I don't know if you guys can see that. And there's a, 
I guess it's a 47, 47 uh, cap in there, it looks like. So yeah, really, I guess, good components. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the neck off and we're gonna check the neck pocket and then we'll pop this pick guard off and see how it's routed underneath. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, so before taking the neck off, I just loosen the strings totally and uh, to release the, release the tension on the neck. And I just grab my, uh, my uh, straight edge here, my notched ruler, and uh, I'm gonna put this on here. And I notice that uh, the neck is uh, back bowed a bit. So literally when I was testing this thing, uh, and I was tuned to E flat, so even less tension than there should be on the neck. So you know how I was telling you in the other video that the neck was super straight? Well, it was super straight. It was actually, you know, back bowed a bit. And still these frets were playing uh, flawlessly with no fret out. So uh, that says a lot for the fret work of this guitar. I will check for inconsistencies in the frets in a minute. But yeah, this is definitely uh, back bowed because my, my straight edge is rocking like this back and forth. Um, I'm going to just check the different spots on the neck. Yeah, same thing. And... And same thing. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, back bowed in the middle here. So, uh, there's too much uh, torque on the wheel. So, I'm going to... Uh, take the little uh, Musi kit that came with. And I'm going to uh, give the neck just a little bit of relief, get it flat. So we're going to go to the left. Oh, that's really tight. Holy moly. There we go. Give it a little... That was so tight it, it bent this rod. <laughs> that's probably not a good sign. Yeah, that's one snug truss rod wheel. So we'll let that sit for a bit and then I'll, I'll double check. But I was looking at the, the user's manual here that came with it. And it says on the first page, it says, um, you know, before using this guitar, you should check the setup and adjust as necessary. Uh, performing a setup will ensure the neck is straight and the action string height and intonation are correct. Um, and, uh, and it says here, it says, uh, to in, uh, our customer service department is dedicated to ensure that your ordering, purchasing, and delivery experience is second to none. If you have any problem with your order, please give us the opportunity to make it right. You can contact us via support at musiguitar.com. So I don't know if you can see that up there. Support at musiguitar.com. Um, now, I emailed them before ordering this guitar. I wanted some inquiry on how the guitar was packaged prior to shipping. I wanted to know if it came with a case or a gig bag uh, because the price was a little bit, you know, above what a budget guitar would be. Uh, and I never, ever got a reply. So I don't know that their customer service is, uh, is uh, very good because <laughs> uh, I, I didn't get any reply. Now, with Ert, um, I, you send them an email, you get a reply within 24 hours. And with IYV, uh, same thing as this one, no replies. I, I've emailed IYV numerous times, never gotten uh, so much as a, as a reply. And I check my junk mail regularly. So um, I don't know what it is with some of these companies. Uh, they put out some you know, decent stuff, but they're lacking big time in other departments. So now it says, getting your instrument ready to play. It says, prior to first use, remove the plastic film from the pickups and other parts of the guitar. So the problem I have with that little comment is that my guitar um, had no plastic film. There was no plastic film on the pickguard and none on the pickups. So I'm thinking I got an uh, unboxed guitar. I think this was uh, sent to someone else prior and for whatever reason they sent it back. Maybe because of these buzzing issues, um, which turns out because it, the guitar is not grounded. So um, I'm not sure uh, what I'm gonna do. I might contact Amazon and see if uh, they might give me a little discount because it was an unboxed guitar because I don't want to pay full price for an unboxed guitar. If I'm going to pay full price, I'm going to send this back and get another one. 
um, brand new that hasn't been touched by anybody else. Um, I'm just fussy that way. So yeah, um, uh, I'm gonna keep checking this neck, uh, the relief on this neck while it's straight, and then I'm gonna use my uh, my uh, this little fret uh, leveling or my little tool to measure uh, to measure uh, the levelness of the frets. Here it is. And I'm going to see if I have any inconsistent frets. But I would suspect none or very little because this thing plays great and it was back bowed with no relief. And the action was super low. So it's crazy. Um, probably the compound radius helps, but anyway, we'll see. I'll be right back. Well, some of you guys caught that mistake I did with this. Um, I was going to the right <laughs> of the truss rod wheel to relieve the tension on the deck. You have to go to the left, right? Um, it's, it's different from when the adjustment is on the top. So from the top, you gotta go this way, right? You gotta go to the right. And so, and, and you gotta go to the left to release. And I went this way, but you gotta look at the, you gotta look at whatever end, you gotta look at the, at the neck, like if you were on the end of the neck. So he, wherever the, the adjustment is. So the wheel is down here. So this would be to the right and this would be to the left. So I just tightened the relief. So I gotta take some off. There we go. Here, I'm gonna give it a couple extra turns to compensate for the two that I just gave it when it was already tight. Uh, so if, I, if my adjustment was on the top, I'd have to go over here with my wrench and this way would be to the right and this way would be to the left because I'm looking from the top. But down here, this way is to the left and this way is to the right. So I just went the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. Always, you know, mistakes to be made, but uh, nothing that can't be corrected. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so um, neck is straight. And here's, here's what I found. Uh, the frets are very good. However, there are a l some tiny inconsistencies. Uh, a little bit of rocking with the fret rocker here. Just a tiny bit. Um, so fret number three, uh, right across is, you know, is a little high. Fret eight, but only on the treble side, like the E and B strings. Um, fret 12 is high right across. Fret 16 is high, but only in the middle. Fret 18 is high right across and fret 20 is high just in the middle, like over the D and G. So very minor stuff. Uh, I think that um, I wouldn't even bother to do a, like a fret leveling. I think I'd just maybe use a file, take a little bit off the top and then repolish. Um, cause, cause these are very well done, um, extremely well. And I've seen, you know, high end guitars that had way worse fret jobs than this. So. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's uh, it's really good. I'm I'm impressed with uh, their work. Um, the Urk guitar was a lot worse than this, um, and it had stainless steel frets as well. So uh, another another good point for the Musi for sure. All right, I'm gonna take this neck off and we'll look at the pocket. All right, so I just took the neck screws and uh, back plate off, and uh, before I pull the neck out, I just want to show you what I found on the back. So just holding that in place here. So the body holes are not screwed uh, large enough. So the screws thread into the body holes. And, uh, and this center hole, look at the finish around it. It's a mess. They really didn't uh, do a good job of, you know, the paint on that or prepping that before the paint. So, uh, I mean, it's hidden. And I guess that's why there's a back plate on there because you can't put the four grommets. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed in that because, uh, but I guess you could buy just a nicer back plate. This is kind of ugly. And I'm surprised it's not, it doesn't have the ring, a uh, nice little plastic, uh, you know, ring around it just to, just to make it look better. Um, even the Amun guitar has, has that. But uh, anyway, I guess you got to cut somewhere. The neck is uh, nicely, you know, nicely put into the pocket. It's it's very tight. I'm gonna try and pop it out of here without wrecking anything. Uh, 
Oh, it's snug in there. Yeah, it's coming. Wow, it's tight. It is tight. Here is a... Uh, I didn't want to undo the string, so uh, I'm just kind of using the old capo trick. Back of the neck. Uh, some dust here. Some little... Uh, yeah, well... Some little raised edges there around the holes, but nothing, nothing major, nothing as bad as on some guitars I've seen. And of course there's dust. And I don't know what this is, it looks like, it's not a chip, it's like, it looks like grease at the very back here. It's like a black speck. I don't know if it was, uh, I don't know what that is. Anyway, looks good. Truss rod wheel, everything looks good in there. Very well made, nice rounded edges. Um, yeah, super nice. Roasted maple neck, super nice. All right, I'm just gonna flip this over. I have a nice soft chair over here to catch the neck, to get it out of the way. The strings aren't even touching the body, so that's great. Uh, so neck pocket, you guys can see. Neck pocket's pretty good. Again, this hole, this center hole here, let me get grab the phone for you. Get a little closer. So again, this center hole is uh is not very good. It's all it's very rough in there. But I guess they don't care because they use the backplate thing and they hide it. But the rest of the pocket is extremely well routed, like very nicely done. Um, so no issues there. Uh, you can see, oh, it's shielding paint. That's that's what that black stuff on the back of the neck is. It's uh it's shielding paint. It's kind of it's kind of it's kind of powdery. Let me put that back here. All right. So that's what that stuff is. Uh, the pocket's really nice. It's got a little bit of dust, but nothing really nothing major. Um, but these holes need to be uh, drilled out. You know what? I might just do that. <laughs> Even though I, I will send it back, it'll just be better for the next person if you know if I do send it back. I'm hoping Amazon will give me a little discount on the price. And then I'll, if, if so, I'll keep it. Just because it's clear that it's an unboxed guitar that they sent me. They didn't send me a new one. Although I paid I paid new price for it. So uh yeah. Just gonna clean this off and then I'll I'll pop off the pickguard and we'll have a look underneath. Alright, just took the screws out. Time for the reveal. Let's pop this thing off and have a look. See what we find. Oh, humbucker route. Hello. Hello. All right. So it is shielding paint, but they they really did a crappy job. <laughs> Excellent job of the routes. These routes are super nice. Like, really nice. Again, I'm grabbing my phone, bring you in a little closer. Look at these routes. Wow, like they are really nice. That's just like dust on top. It's not scratches or whatever. The routes are, are perfect. Like they are really, really well done. But uh, look at the shielding paint. Like you can see the brush strokes and, you know, I don't know, some amateur did that. <laughs> it's really not good. So if I keep it, it's getting all copper shielding tape. I don't really trust this paint job here. Um, I would definitely uh, fix that up if I if I uh, keep the guitar. But uh, yeah, I'm impressed. You could put a nice uh, humbucker size P90 in there or just a humbucker or, or you got lots of options now that I see that. Uh, you could even fit probably a Strat neck pickup in there. You'd have to modify the, the hole on the pickguard, of course. But but this looks like just a standard Telecaster 8-hole uh, pickguard. And um, and yeah, and the pickups are El Nico. Uh, you can see the magnets right through the bottom. There's no steel plate at the bottom. They are El Nico. As far as I can tell, they are unbranded. I can't really... There's nothing written on the back of them. Uh, oh, and these as well. So, so if you if you can see here, let me get the phone again. So they're like a staggered pickup, but I've never really seen this before. So I don't know if this is their own design, but so 
you can see on the pickup here that the E, A, B, and E string magnets are just flat, right? Like a typical pickup. And these are kind of, they look like, they look like a little, I don't know, like a raised circle, almost like a solder drip <laughs> on top of them. Like it's, it's, um, it's, but it's not sharp on the edge. Like it's just like a rounded ball on the end of the pickup, uh, pickup magnets. So it's almost like they, um, their version of a staggered pickup. Um, and it, I guess it may bring out that snap in the, the D and G strings maybe. And, and the bridge pickup is the same. It's, uh, it's got those same little protruded uh, El Nico's on the end of the D and G strings. So yeah, I'm not really sure um, if that's their own design or what the reason is behind it, but I'm assuming it's, it's their, their version of a staggered pickup. So that really looks good in there. Uh, again, I think the whole buzzing issue is uh, just a shielding shielding problem and maybe some a little bit of uh, dusty pots uh, because there's like dust inside the cavities and stuff. Um, they did vacuum a bit or or clean a bit because they did uh, you know use the shielding paint so I'm sure they they kind of blew out the guitar first but um, yeah and uh, this is mahogany apparently the body the bodies are mahogany on these things so um, whether that's good or bad I don't know but anyway uh, so far, no double drilled holes, you know, everything seems to be well lined up, everything seems to be good. Um, I'm going to pop this bridge off right quick just to have a look at this route to see if this is a humbucker route as well or if it's just a regular tele route and then uh, I think we'll be done. But I'm going to reinstall this pickguard first, be right back. Alright, screws are out, let's flip this up, have a quick look, see what we're dealing with. Oh, it's just a, it's a regular uh, tele pickup route. I don't have a whole lot of wire to play with here. So there we go. You guys see that? Just a regular pickup route. Again, um, it's shielded very poorly. <laughs> you can see the brush strokes inside. Very nicely done route. Super precise. Very clean. Um, and uh, no double screw holes <laughs> in this body. Everything is nice nice and clean at the back. Uh, the string through body holes are perfect. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Just gotta clean that up a bit. Uh, and again, a uh, big uh, brass plate on the bottom of the El Nico. And you can see this big uh, heavy white cloth wire. Uh, looks like might be some what 43 gauge maybe that they are using for these I, I don't know um, anyway looks uh, looks good but again unbranded I don't know I don't know what what they put in here um, very nice very nice no no issues no issues everything fits like a glove all right well guys uh, that's it. That's uh, the internals of the Musi, the M Musi Virgo Classic T guitar. I'm assuming all the other Musis are the same. Why they would not um, ground the controls to the bridge is beyond me. I don't know why they would do that, but uh, they did. They they didn't. They omitted the ground, uh, which for a guitar this pristine and this well built uh kind of is very surprising like even the pickguard cuts like in the neck pocket like they're perfect they're like it's almost like the pickguard was put on there when they routed out the neck pocket like it's it's perfect like there's not a a blip or a you know like it's nothing it's just it's just bang on so uh, i'm very impressed but then again, you know, they didn't drill out the, the, the neck pocket in the body. And this this hole that I, they probably use to... It's either like for painting or it's probably the hole that they use to center the CNC machine or whatever. Um, but they did a terrible job of that. Um, but other than that, the rest of the guitar is absolutely pristine. I'm, I'm super impressed. Um, super impressed with the construction of this. 
So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to put this back together and uh, stay tuned for the next video because uh, regardless if I send it back or not, I want to do a video comparing this to the Ert guitar that's over there in the corner. You can't see it, but um, we're going to do a little comparison because they are very similar in features and weight and um, we're going to see what they sound like. Anyway, take care guys. Thank you very much. God bless.